Today's episode of Outside the Rack is brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of the gym aware. In today's world of strength and conditioning, data collections become the utmost of importance, and that's exactly where gym aware separates itself from the competition. Because when we're sitting there and looking to collect data, what data are you actually collecting? And are the numbers you're looking at fitting into the exercises that you're utilizing? And even more so, are they going to answer the questions that you're looking for? Looking at different ways that you are moving the barbell through peak and mean, both velocity and power, is really what separates gym aware from the competition. Being able to understand what your ballistic exercises are doing separate to what your strength exercises are doing really allows you to program at a much more specific level for your athletes. So hop on over to kinetic.com.au to see what Evan and his team have in store for you today. The world of strength and conditioning is filled with some fantastic practitioners that are always searching for more. But more what? What are strength and conditioning coaches searching for to better their ability to prepare their athletes? Well, what about cutting edge information or a place where you can find different opinions from forward thinking coaches on what you're doing, how you're doing, and try to get feedback to be better for your athletes? Or what about a place where you'll find like-minded coaches that can provide solid coaching advice and career development for you as you progress through your career as a strength and conditioning professional? Well, this is exactly why we built the Strength Coach Network. You'll have access to exclusive monthly content on top of the sensationally active forum that we have where you can communicate with coaches all over the world to find those answers that you're looking for to help you be a better practitioner for your athletes. So make sure you hop on over to strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, that's strengthcoachnetwork.com slash CVASPS, and get your 48-hour trial for only a dollar. I look forward to seeing you in the Strength Coach Network. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the 54th episode of Outside the Rack, brought to you by Kinetic Performance, the makers of gym aware. In this show, we're just going to try to dive a little deeper into the minds of the top practitioners of the world of sport performance and learn a little bit more about who they actually are and how they got to where they are today. Today, we are joined by the Get Awesome Coach at Lifetime, Fit, Lifetime Athletic, excuse me, in King of Prussia, Pennsylvania, Sean Fantuzzi. Sean, man, great to see you. Great to have you here, man. How you doing? Great, dude. Thank you so much for having me on again. I appreciate it. Uh, I love all the things that you do for CVASP and, uh, or CV, uh, CVAPS and just – what the content you put out is amazing. The people you have on your podcast, the stuff that you talk about and what you preach is just high quality stuff. So the fact that you have me on, I'm honored. Well, appreciate that, man. Always good to catch up. Glad to see you doing well up North. Glad to have you back on the East coast. Yes. But before we get yeah. going too far into it, bro, who is Sean Fantuzzi? Uh, Sean Fantuzzi wears a lot of hats. Uh, first and foremost, I'm a husband to a beautiful, beautiful woman love my wife. Um, then uh, I consider myself a subpar athlete. Uh, I'm not going to call myself an athlete because I'm a subpar athlete at best, uh, but I do like to get after it. Uh, I'm also a coach, um, a, fit, a fitness professional, personal trainer, but I consider, will always consider myself a coach of movement. And uh, lastly, I am a eternal optimist. Um, I truly, truly like to be as stress-free aside from the physical activity portion of life as possible. Um, so I like to at least look on the brighter side of things in any possible situation. Which is a very, very positive attribute to have in this exceptional year that we have been going through. It has been, it's been more than challenging, let's put it that way. But like I said, it, it, the eternal optimist likes to think there's always a silver lining. So we've had a lot of time over the last couple months. Like we've had the opportunity to learn things in the training world, in the performance world, outside of the performance world. I've dove into some multiple streams of income ideas, some investment opportunities, like, I, I used to be the guy that's afraid of looking at their bank account whenever I was a strength coach because like, there's not a lot of money in strength and conditioning. I don't think I'm unveiling any big secrets there. But 
when I was going through the profession, my first five years, six years, like it's, it, it was nerve wracking because like it wasn't a lot. It's never a lot unless you're power five. And even then you can't make any promises with job security. So I don't know. It, it was always a, um, it was always very, very nerve wracking looking at my bank account, but um I've got a little bit more financially literate over this this quarantine. So I'm starting to be a little bit more comfortable looking at checks, balances, everything like that, and budgeting. And um, that's been my biggest kind of proud moment through the quarantine and everything. So I wanted to brag about that a little bit. That's pretty awesome, dude. It's funny. You know, Zach was just on last week. He's he's talked about that quite a bit. It's something that... Mm -hmm. I think we all can get better at, but I mean, that's just something that, you know, even beyond an eternal optimist, you know, you're, you're a student of a lot of things, like not just the game and not just your athletes and not just coaching, but obviously there's a whole vast array of things that, that Sean's digging into. So I'm actually excited to hear about this one. Describe a learning situation that brought about an epiphany in your career. There's a couple. There's a couple. Um, one that I'm really, really proud of, though, um, is recent. It was the uh, it was the decision to leave collegiate athletics. Um, I'm very proud of that decision I came came about with, mainly because it gave me more time. And as you know, time is of the um, the highest level commodity. Um, time is priceless. Everything on those lines. Like I was at a point where there were, there were days where we would train football in the morning from like 6 a.m. till 9 or 10, uh, basketball in the afternoon or uh, basketball pregame at noon, soccer late afternoon, like three to five, maybe a little bit of soccer practice right after that. And then basketball game going till 11, sometimes midnight, um, like, I, I'm sure you know those long days and coaches can brag about the grind. Athletes can brag about the grind all they want. But if like, you're not, if you're not spending time with the people that mean the most to you and to make you a better person, like you're, you're going to not enjoy what you're getting yourself into. Um, so there were days where I would bring that kind of frustration. Let, let's say, our basketball team lost on a buzzer beater or you just had a long day. You got yelled at by your coach because Lord knows what happened. Like if you bring that frustration home to the people around you that care most about you, like you're adding an unwanted stress into their life and making them fr more frustrated and more sad and you're ruining a relationship. That's the complete opposite of what I stand for as a human being is I want to be I want to bring positive influence. I want to bring positive relationships to people all around me. So I started, I started really thinking like, yes, I know my heart is in performance, but I also know I need more time with my family to make sure that I have time well spent with them and well spent with my athletes, because I think a better relationship there means better relationships with my athletes. So that whole adage of you are the sum of the five people around closest around you. I forget the exact words for that, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, that really hits home to me. And it was a situation for me where I had an opportunity to leave um, the very tropical state of North Dakota and come back so that I'm now an hour and a half drive from my parents in Pennsylvania I'm a 25, 30 minute drive from my in-laws. I live in a beautiful up and coming area with my wife and we're looking for a house this upcoming year. And uh, right now working in the private sector, I'm still training some athletes, but I'm also training some general population people that are just looking to get out of pain. Like that's very, very cool for me to help them just walk up the stairs easier and not get exhausted or get rid of low back pain. Like that's what we do for our athletes. We try to not let them get injured. Like that's what we're doing here at Lifetime. That's what I do. So just that whole, I kind of rambled a little bit. I'm sorry, but I, I 
the whole time realizing like I need to spend my time better um, than just at an institution under the, under the helm of a sport coach that may or may not respect the whole process of what I do uh, considering I've been called a weights coach before. And I think that's one of the most insulting things I've ever been called, <laughs> but oh, it facts. happens. It, it's, it's happened. Yeah. So I guess, yeah, it's the, the, the time you put into work. I, I respect a lot of people that put a lot of time into their work in their craft. And I felt like, not that I didn't des- not that I deserved more credit than I got, but I felt like I was a little underappreciated um, and that I could be a lot better of a person. I could lead people better, um, not at the setting I was in. So I weighed my pros and cons, talked to the wife. She was all about it considering she now lives 20 hours closer to her parents um, and packed up, moved, moved home, got married and uh, tested our first year of marriage with a global pandemic. Yeah. Deep end. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. And being in a, a, a decently small apartment outside of Philadelphia with your with your wife on the first year, kind of stuck in the same room for a very long time, um, challenging nonetheless. But I I will say till the day I die, my greatest. My greatest feat so far in life is convincing her to marry me. That is by far the coolest thing I've ever done um, and will ever do. That's rad, brother. But listen, man, like there's so much in that that's so important. And I think the big thing is like, you've got to understand like where you stand and what you're, what you're trying to do. And if it's not there, you're kind of the opposite of what Zach and I spoke about last week. Like, when you have that spot, you got to keep it, but you got to be able to identify if that spot isn't for you. And that's a time to just be like, you know, maybe it's just not the right thing. And I'm stoked that y'all found something great out there and things are working well, man. Yeah. It's, um, it's been a blessing in disguise. Uh, well, don't get me wrong. It, a blessing in disguise getting to North Dakota. I learned so much from the people that are out there. I learned so much from you. It forced me to, network so much more than um, if I were to be literally in the Philadelphia area because it's it's easy to travel here like uh, before quarantine like I could go to Villanova I could go to Temple I could go to Westchester visit Dr. Ken Clark like you could go so many places in 20-30 minutes closest place to University of North Dakota is NDSU and that's still an hour and 15 minutes away Thankfully, Minnesota's right there, so I got to know those guys over there awesomely. Uh, Cal, Corey, all that, the whole staff was awesome whenever I was out there. Uh, always welcomed me with open arms, but it forced me to be on the phone with a lot of people over the course of my time, and I made some pretty cool contacts that uh, will forever be very, very close to me. That's awesome, brother. But even with all of that, right, like it comes down to wanting to find better answers and wanting to figure things out more. So I'm actually stoked to hear what you can, what you got cooked for this one, bro. If you could ask one question, Sean, you know you're going to get the answer. What would that question be and why? You know, I know you asked this on this podcast a lot. And um, I don't know if I have, like, everything I want to ask is a why question. Like, why does this, why does this person do that? Why, why, why? So I don't know if I have an actual good answer for you. I've always struggled with how to objectively measure the performance of a strength coach so that we could find a better way to measure successes and failures. But that, that's another rabbit hole. Um, however, I do, I do like talking about the question and maybe you and I can bounce some ideas off each other. Like, what is strong enough? That's always a really good question to ask someone in any sort of performance training or uh, any aspect of fitness. Like, what's strong enough? Because, like, you can define it in a number of different ways. Rory McIlroy, uh, professional golfer, I know trap bar deadlifts. I've seen videos of him trap bar def- deadlifting 405. 
does he need to do that to be the exceptional golfer that he is? I don't know if he deadlifted 135 for 10, would that make him a worse golfer? Probably not because he's God gifted at what he's doing. It's the same conversation about LeBron, like LeBron and uh, LeBron, like Kevin Durant, sorry, Kevin Durant. Can bench press 185, arguably the best scorer of all time. Like, I guess from a performance standpoint, is what we, what we doing really working or is it not hurting? I think that's a pretty cool question to ask. From a strength, prehab, uh, priming standpoint, I think that's kind of cool. Like, w- what we doing, does it work or is it just not hurting? It's an interesting way to look at it, too. Yeah. I've, um, I've listened to, thankfully, I've had, I have about a 20 minute drive in the morning to listen to a lot of podcasts. So, um, I've got to listen to some pretty cool people on a number of different podcasts, so including your own, obviously. Um, so it's really, it's a time for me to think and reflect and think about where along the performance line do we like to draw things. Like even, like even to the extremes, like you're talking the fastest people on the planet, Usain Bolt, like how do they get to where they are? Like, is a strength and conditioning coach in today's society going to get him any better? Like, is the the guy who ran the fastest marathon? I I'm sorry to the guy for not remembering his name, but like, is a strength and conditioning coach or going to get him any better at running marathons? Like, those are the extremes. But like, there's place in the middle that not at the elite. That I think we do serve value but how much i'm curious on a percentage how much are good are we truly doing to our athletes um if i if i didn't think we're doing any i wouldn't be in the position i am or i didn't i wouldn't be in the field but i would love to know like how much that is going towards their actual performance oh man i dig it i do and i think that those are things that we all run down this rabbit hole and i think that we all jump back and forth like we're on the, the pendulum swing ourselves where it's like everything's important nothing matters everything's important nothing matters so i think that like everything it's somewhere in the middle and i think that at some point we'll figure it out i just don't know if that figuring out is going to be before graybeard finds his end of what he's doing with all of this but as we <laughs> keep digging homie like you know you talked about keeping your cup full and, and all of those things and keep my coffee that, cup full yeah, no doubt. You gotta, you gotta be able to have a way to, to recharge. So what's Sean's escape? My escape is, uh, and I gotta, I, anyone who follows me on social media or knows me knows that I'm a huge Marvel nerd. Um, and I, I do keep up with a lot of stuff like behind the scenes. I just, I, I like to engulf myself in those kind of stories because to me it's, they are stories. They're novels. And like Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, and all those guys that uh, did all those comics, Marvel comics. Now DC is looking like DC's comics is getting big with a lot of the trailers they just put out last week. But I I nerd out with Marvel movies. I own them all. I watch YouTube videos of Easter eggs. Um, It's it's just a little release. And, And my wife is all on board with it too, which is cool. She got me like a a Thor bobblehead uh, because I guess I'm Chris Hemsworth doppelganger, Chris Hemsworth's doppelganger, um, which I'm not, I'm not going to deny. I love the compliment, Um, but it's, it's just cool to be able to listen to these stories about heroes and being, being proud of something like that because you can, you can be a hero at any, any point in your life. You just have to talk to the right person that needs the right help. That's a great line. Yeah. That's freaking yeah. rad. Homie. You, never know, you never really know what someone's going through. They could be having the worst day of their life. Um, and a simple, granted, now with masks on, it's a little tough. But uh, a simple smile and a how you doing. Like, 
I've had people open up before here. It's, uh, it's, it's interesting. I've been pretty, I've had pretty special relationships with both my athletes, uh, that I had before and my clients at my client slash athletes here. Um, we've had some good conversation about some hardships and we're able to talk it out. And from that relationship has grown a better one. Like I had a few of my athletes at my wedding last summer, which meant the world to me. I get invited to one of my ex athletes weddings this past summer. Like there's no statistic, there's no performance statistic that can match you getting a, uh, wedding invitation from one of your former athletes that's that's special on a whole new level yeah dude that's that's 100 percent, man couldn't agree more sean man i appreciate you bro keep kicking butt up there man i appreciate you know all your support and everything you've done for us and, and always great to catch up homie this is rad and we'll be in touch real soon thank you man give me a call when you get up to philly okay yeah dude 100 percent <laughs>